Howdy everybody. Today we're working on the high solo to Lonesome Road Blues and we're doing this for more than one reason. For one thing, it's a classic solo that everyone should learn how to play at some point or another. And for another thing, it works as a great um, kind of vessel to learn how to play comfortably in different keys. So we'll talk more about that later, but for now let's just start with the breakdown to Lonesome Road Blues. <laughs> nice and slow so you can hear all the details. Sounds like this. slide up on the 2nd string, 10th to 12th fret. I'm fretting that with middle finger, picking it with index, and once you slide, follow that with 5th string like this. And then you still are going to keep your middle finger on the 12th fret 2nd string, put your ring finger on 12th fret 1st, and you'll play 1, 1, 5, 2, 1, 5, like this. So all together it sounds like this. Next phrase. I still have ring and middle fingers on 12th fret 1 and 2. You're just going to bring your pinky up to the 14th fret 1st string and play 1, 5. Take pinky off, play 1, 5 again. Next phrase. So this is pretty easy. You're just playing a foggy mountain breakdown roll, and every time you play the second string, you're going to choke on the tenth fret. So it'll, um, so anyone who doesn't know, foggy mountain breakdown roll is two one two one five two one five, and every time you hit the two, you're going to give it a nice fat choke like this. So this is what we have so far. Next phrase. What this is, is really, it's based around the G chord. So if you've got a D-shaped G chord like this, we're working with just the top two strings and we're fretting them as you do when you make a two finger um, chord shape. Um, for the D-shape, it would be index on the second string. So that's index on eighth fret second string and ring finger on ninth fret second string. So again, here's your D-shaped G. We're just using the top two strings and switching fingers to index on second, ring on first. So think of that as a G chord. Um, and with that in place, you're going to play two as an eighth note, two, bring your pinky up to the eleventh fret second string and play five, two, one, five, pinky off and finish it with two, one. So again, nice and slow. This is what we have so far. Next phrase sounds. 
sounds like this. So again, we had ended on the two finger version of a D shaped G. What we're doing here is sliding into an F shaped C chord. And the reason I'm taking the time to point that out is that when you finish learning this solo and you start to use it as a way to get more comfortable playing in different keys, knowing the chord shapes that you're working around is exactly what you need to be doing. That's going to be your ticket to success there. So as we continue on, you know, just take note of what chord shape it is you're working with and that's going to be really helpful on down the line. Um, so back to the breakdown, that was a slide on the um, third string, eighth to ninth fret, fretted that with your middle finger, picking it with thumb, and then once you're there at ninth fret, third string, put down the rest of the C chord. You don't have to fret the fourth string if you don't want to, doesn't really matter, but with that in place you'll play two, one, five, two, one, five. Again, three, two, one, five, two, one, five. Next phrase. And what that is, is 12th fret first string with your ring finger, and 11th fret second string with your index finger, and you're probably wondering, well, that doesn't fit in a C chord, not the F shape, not the C shape, so why is it there? If the band were playing, it would still be on the C chord, and the reason is, and this is pretty cool, is that even though it doesn't fit into that chord shape, it's getting all bluesy and, and, and jazzy sounding and going to this version of a C chord, which honestly, don't ask me what it is, I just know it sounds cool. And that, that two finger version right there, 12th fret 1, 11th fret 2, is part of that, that um, different voicing of the C chord. Um, so that's cool, you can recycle that and use that other times that you are using an F-shaped chord. Um, so again, once you're there, 12th fret 1st string, 11th fret 2nd string, you'll play a foggy mountain breakdown roll. Two, one, two, one, five, two, one, five. Next phrase. Again, this is working around the two finger version of a D shaped G. However, we're just adding that middle finger on the ninth fret third string, making that classic triangle shape I always talk about. Comes up all the time up the neck. Um, but it is working around the two finger version of a D shaped G. So with that ninth fret first, eighth fret second, ninth fret third, in place you'll play one, two, three, one. Pinky comes up to 11th fret 2nd string, and you'll play 5, 2, 1, 5, and then take pinky off and end it on 2nd string. Again, nice and slow. Next phrase. So you're going to bring your pinky back up to the 11th fret 2nd string, play 5, 2, 1, pinky off, 5, 2, 1. So that new section there that we've just added sounds like this. that there is a whole bunch of repetition so I'm just going to play through everything that repeats and start breaking it down again once it changes so this is all the same you're going to start with sliding in to the F shape C like this wonky C triangle shape When you, when you end on that second string, um, after that triangle shape lick, that's where it changes. And it goes into this phrase right here. And what that is, is exactly the same as the first phrase that the tune started with. It was slide on second string, tenths to twelfth fret, two, followed by five, ring finger on twelfth fret first, so you've got 12th fret, 1 and 2 fretted, and you'll play 1, 1, 5, 2, 1, 
five. Go down to the tenth fret, second string, and this is also exactly as we started the tune with. I just know it's been a while since we worked on that, so I'm gonna break it down quickly. It's just where you're choking tenth fret, second string every time you hit the second string on a foggy mountain breakdown roll like this. And then the last phrase of the tune sounds like this. That's what we call an up the neck tag lick. Again, it's this two finger version of a G chord. Add that third string at the, at the ninth fret to make the triangle shape. Oops, screen went dark. And you'll play two, bring your pinky up to the 11th fret second. Five, two, one, take pinky off. Two, three, one, two. And that's the whole tune. So again, I'll play it slowly for your um, sake so you can play along with it, and then we'll talk about how you can use this to play in different keys. as a way to get really comfortable really fast in keys that are commonly regarded as the most challenging for banjo players. And I'm talking about keys like F or D or C. These keys that require more than just, you know, slapping on a capo the way we would for, say, the key of A or B or B flat. These are more complicated keys. Scout, you want to learn to play the banjo? These are more complicated keys because of the fact that they require more from your left hand, more knowledge of the fretboard. Um, so anyway, what I was saying is that I'm going to walk you through the first line of Lonesome Red Blues, up the neck in the key of G where we had learned it, and we're going to go through that and identify the chord shapes that we're working around. So here we go. And what we were doing there is we first started up here at the 12th fret 1 and 2. What that is is a two finger version of a bar shape G. So you know, this is how you find your starting point, you know that whatever key it is that you're playing in, you just need to find the bar shape version of that chord, and that's your starting point. Then we moved down here to this lick, and that's a two finger version of a D shape G. So that gives you, you know, gives you your bearings on where you're going to be playing regardless of the key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the key of C and find my bar shape C and find my D shape C and play the exact same stuff just moved into that position. So here's a bar shape C and a D shape C, as you know, is this, just the regular C chord. If there was one more fret, you would use your index finger there and use these fingerings, but we don't have another fret, so that's a D-shaped C chord. And I'm going to play the exact same stuff, like this. And then you can continue on like that, just kind of play through line by line and figure out relatively how that works. You slide into an F-shaped C chord here. Um, in this case, you would just slide into an F-shaped F chord. It's all exactly the same stuff. Now, the problem arises when you go to something like the key of D, where the fifth string is not going to fit into the chord. So I could locate the bar shape D, locate the D shape D, and play the exact same things. problem is that the fifth string doesn't fit into the chord. So here's my tip for you. Where your bar shape is, this is here at the seventh fret, spike the fifth string where your bar shape is. So in this case, it's right here. 
and then that will get the fifth string into into chord. And I could do the same thing for the key of E. You know, I just find the bar shape E chord and the D shape E chord. And remember, where are you going to spike the fifth string? You spike it at the bar shape. So here it is. And I have gone ahead and spiked that right there. And then play the same stuff. And so forth and so on. And that's it. It's not rocket science. Um, you know, the, the next thing that you would do is just learn to play a couple different solos up the neck in the key of G. Most people know how to do that if they're intermediate and beyond. Um, and then just try to pull them and put them into different keys using that method. Just identify the chord shapes, scoot it down to the next key, and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I will see you next time.